All right, what's up, everybody? I am Caleb. I'm Haley. And, and I'm, I'm having, having coffee, coffee with, with my ex. ex. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is our first ever time doing a podcast, so give us a break. Yeah. Um, if you're watching this podcast, we have a giant microphone arm <laughs> on the table because I threw away my microphone stand twice. Yeah, the setup is trash. It came in <laughs> twice, and I said, no, I'll never use that, so... We have a metal bendy arm on the table. Yeah, it's a lot. But what's <laughs> exciting is that you can see us progress. Yeah, yeah. You will definitely see us progress, hopefully. So this whole podcast idea came about because of Haley wanting to do a podcast. Well, we went on um, our friend TK's podcast like a couple weeks ago, and it was just like a lot of fun. And every time I feel like I do like an interview or like a podcast or something like that, like I have so much fun mm-hmm. and it's just like so easy. And so she literally convinced us to do it. Well, I feel like every time we're, we just talk, it's like, I, we think it's normal. But I think that if there was just a microphone recording our normal conversations, it would be very interesting to a subgroup of the population. Right. <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> I'm done. If you don't know us, we have a YouTube channel, which is a dance fitness type thing. So we're always on screen dancing, but we really don't talk much unless you watch our like Instagram stories or whatnot. But... Yeah. There's really not a place that we've ever had to kind of sit down and just... Talk about things like at length. Yeah. Yeah. Like show our depth as human beings. <laughs> or the lack, deep in- lack thereof. <laughs> Get ready for our intellectual... <laughs> Stupid. Intellectuality. It's dumb. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so, okay. hold on. So you, you talk. I okay, tell them. Okay. So for our viewers or for our listeners, actually, no one can really see this. We put a paper towel over the light as a filter because we're trash. <laughs> That's a literal trash. And just fell off, and it felt like Jesus has come back to earth. <laughs> You're overexposed. Okay. Oh wow. All right. We're fixing that. Everything's good to go. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well. Yes, welcome to our very first podcast. Um, I figured for our first ever show, we can like go into like why we think that maybe you like we are important enough to have a podcast. <laughs> why we deserve a podcast. <laughs> no, but really, we're just going to go through kind of like how we started TFM because I know a lot of you, obviously, who are listening to this probably know we have a YouTube channel already. Mm-hmm. So it might be insightful to just like hear. Mm-hmm. About how it all came to be. So, I feel like we've talked about this a million times in a million different it's places. It's like, here's but... the thing, and we can say this on the podcast, I hate telling this story. I know. Because... I know you do. But now you can tell it how you want That's to. That's true. That's true. Instead of like being like on a talk show or like an interview where you have to be I put together. I just hate when I'm like having to talk, be on talk shows and tell my story. <laughs> so pretty much I'm a combination of Britney Spears and Richard Simmons. That's uh, like the tagline. <laughs> it is. It's good, but it's annoying at this point. So um, I grew up liking to perform. Mm-hmm. Clearly, I was kind of insecure as a kid and I found dance to be an outlet for me. So and I know Haley has, you know, kind of the same story. I feel like every performer, and I feel like universally, most people probably feel that way. It's like you, you whenever you have insecurities, there are like little random things that you can do to kind of bring out who you really are and mm-hmm. who, who makes you feel comfortable and normal. So dance was that for me. I did that um, all throughout middle school and high school performing. We had a really interesting community where... There, it was like in the middle of nowhere. Like we're both from Indiana. We're both from the same town. Small town. Yeah, contacts. We're both in the same town. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people in our town were really creative. And yeah. there was oddly a lot of outlets for us. Yeah. There were really good dance studios mm-hmm. that I know you were a part of. Mm-hmm. There were, and I was a part of the same one actually for mm-hmm. a while. Um, there was this guy who came to town basically. I guess I'm sidetracking. Yeah, you are. I'm sidetracking too much. Yeah. That'll be a different podcast. <laughs> Bottom line, I liked performing when I was a kid. Got to college. Didn't really have a way to perform. This is why I need my TV show script. <laughs> Otherwise, it just derails. I know. <laughs> um, I know. Liked performing. Got to college. Didn't really have an outlet. Didn't want to like get in a sad spiral of never dancing or performing again. So I started taking these fitness classes just for, you know, for fun. And it turned into something that was like, wow, this is incredible. I can dance. I can perform again. I can 
fill that void. And so I started my senior year of college putting what I was doing, because I started teaching those classes. So I started putting the choreography that I taught in my classes on YouTube, put a fun brand behind it, and then started having my friends be in the videos as well. And so that's where Haley started to join in because I had always admired her. Okay, pause. And oh, we never went into the... What? I don't know. There's so many like okay, ways you can segue. Okay, I know. Segue. Okay, we need to go back because You're I right. wanna I wanna go to how we met. How did we meet? Show choir. Okay. Well, you. I feel like you remember that better. For some reason, I feel like I blacked out a lot <laughs> in high school. <laughs> okay, so in high school, we had the show choir, and I had to audition to get into it. I was so excited. And I auditioned and became a first alto, and Caleb was a year older than me, mm-hmm. so he was already in the group, and he was a first tenor. And Mind t- you, I got in the group without having to audition. Well, no one, I'm just like, literally no one, like, no one knows, like, my family, like... I was a local celebrity. Yeah, like, there's just like, you know, in a small town, like, either you're known or you're not, and I was not one of those, like, people, so obviously, like, our director was like, who is this girl? And so I had to sing, here we go, Vision of Love. <laughs> And so Caleb and I sat right next to each other. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much how we met. And he was just so goofy. I feel like if you can make me laugh, like I just want to be your best friend. Or and- more. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of like how we met. So we've always, like we've been dancing and performing together since, I mean, it's been like 10 years. Yeah. So. But in that, so to go along with the theme of the show, when we met... That's when I was, you know, a young man looking for love in a female. And specifically. And spe- and specifically looking for love in a female. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I don't remember, you started dating my best friend. Sure. Right? Yeah. That's what happened. And then while, but we were already like friends. Mind you, first. like we're like 14. <laughs> like 14, 15 years old. Like this is it all meant like. a lot. We were young. And we started to, like, we were friends, and then you were dating my best friend, and then I, well, you guys broke up. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you leave him for me? What? How did that come about? <laughs> I know, he just treated me like trash. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he watches this. <laughs> was there an in-between period, or did we just start yes, dating? Yes, there was definitely an in-between period. I forget how we started dating. Oh, I have, okay, so I think that... It was like one of those things where you like texted me and was like, I like you. And like, I don't really know. I, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know how like that goes when you're like in high school and like, that's just what it was. And then you like asked me to be your girlfriend, like on my porch. And then you texted everyone that you knew. Porch. I texted everyone that you knew and said, she said yes or something uh, like that. Uh, <laughs> so he pursued me. So let's get that very clear. Okay. Because I could tell how bad you wanted it. <laughs> You were thirsty for my tenor C. (laughs) You were thirsty for my tenor D. That is so stupid. Um, No, we were young. We were actually minors. That's weird to talk about. Yeah. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, So we started dating. We dated for five months. You claim it's shorter. It was definitely four. (laughs) Dated for five months. (laughs) Um, that was for sure at that point in time at the ripe age of 15 or 16 Mm -hmm. for me, the most serious relationship I'd been in. (laughs) It's so funny. But it's, what's really funny is that like, we argued all the time. We argued like we do now. Like just like bickering, just like always like bickering, like. Us? No. (laughs) No way. I mean, we're like, my best friend Alyssa, like she was like. Who I dated. Yeah. (laughs) Trash. Um, yeah and she'd always be like you guys are so annoying you guys argue all the fucking time like get a grip like yeah because you'd always want to go out like a party or like whatever I loved a party (laughs) when I was 15 (laughs) anyway so yeah then we broke up why (laughs) why did you leave me (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my god, I can't go through this Let again. Me, no, we already have. We, no, we already have. We've had too many videos talking about this. <laughs> but we have to. It's the whole premise of why we named it the the podcast Coffee with My Ex. It's the whole point. It's like where we chose this thing. We did. We chose this episode. I hate this narrative. I literally every time Caleb brings this situation up to anyone like that I don't really know, I'm like, oh dear God, I'm gonna have to re-explain myself. Like. Over and over. How do you not know? I don't know. I was literally a child. Can I preface this by saying that I had my last relationship with a girl had ended because she found out I hooked up with a guy. And Haley knew this <laughs> oh going God. into this. I was not sure if it was true or not. Haley was my Hail Mary. She was the last person that would not have any idea that, that I was so gay. That is so rude. <laughs> she was like, maybe he just tripped and fell on his dick. <laughs> I did not think that i literally didn't think it happened because of who told me oh your, your ex <laughs> your ex i can't wait for him to see <laughs> um where were we um what do you mean oh you leaving me <laughs> so uh, i at, uh ended up getting back with that guy who i had hooked up with before Haley. And who was like my, my brother, who was your brother, the show choir dance captain. I mean, we like, were like, yeah, the show choir was a very inbred family. Really we was. just passed each other around. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, so that happened. And so, oh my gosh, I just like, I hate going into it all. Bottom line <laughs> is I was very confused because Haley, oh my God. Haley and I were very close, obviously, and I didn't want to be gay. That was clearly the goal here, but I couldn't help myself. But it was easier with Haley than anybody else because, one, I was 15 and I was doing this <laughs> stuff for the first time. But, two, I really had a connection with Haley, and I, like, genuinely loved Haley. Please. You're, shut, you're, <laughs> shut, like, shut up. You're annoying. <laughs> shut up. I loved her. And I'm so uncomfortable. I, I'm uncomfortable too. You think I like this? You think this is fun for me? Um, and so it was confusing because we had a good connection. I cared about her, but I realized it was meant to be like on a best friend level. And mm -hmm. we talk about this and we'll talk about this probably in another podcast. But I mean, I think there are certain people in your life that you do feel that way about that you don't have to date yeah, or like be romantically involved with. And yeah. so that was where... I was like, okay, maybe it's that kind of connection, and I really need a connection with a guy. Like, I was right the first time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Haley and I broke up, mm -hmm. and that, did we want to talk about that? Okay. Oh my god, this is the last time we're doing this. I know, it really is. This is it, this guys. Is it. This is it. <laughs> um, so I had been talking to this the guy on Facebook Messenger quite a lot and we had already like made plans to meet up and like we were going on kind of like dates but they he's weren't dates. <laughs> he's out here cheating. He's not He's out here stepping out. <laughs> I didn't step out. I stepped out a little bit. <laughs> Just emotionally. <laughs> um, and I decided to go to Haley's house to have a conversation with her. And there was no conversation. And I just texted her and I was like, hey, I need to come over and like talk about something. And I remember going to your house, driving there in my 2004 purple vibe. And it was maroon. Maroon. His name was Stanley. Stanley. And I knocked on your door and you answered the door and you were watching Friends. Always. And we, you just like looked at me like you already knew what was about to happen. Yeah. And I walked in and I just sat down on the couch and we were just watching Friends together awkwardly. Like neither one of us was paying attention to it. Yeah. But we weren't saying anything. Then you went to my room. You initiated that. Oh, I did? Yeah. You were like, do you want to go in my room and talk? <laughs> oh my God. I hate that. I don't like remember it. I do. <laughs> I don't remember much, but that I, don't I remember. I remember this very well. You took... I'm pretty sure you like, t oh my God, I think you like took my hand and like took me to a room. Ew, really uh, ew, this is weird. I don't like this. <laughs> and we went to your room and laid on your bed and. Then we just cried. I think we just immediately, I think you just like, we like looked at each other and like no one said anything. And then yeah. I think the tears just started happening. And yeah. I think all I said was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like, I didn't say, hey, I'm gay. Hey, I'm leaving you for somebody. It was just like this, like, we can't be together. And it, I don't even know how you. I knew you knew. I don't know. I was just like, I don't know. 
that was hard. That was honestly one of the real, and still to this day, like that was one of the most adult moments. Yeah. For we our were, age. We were really young and it was a lot, I feel like, for both of us to deal with. Obviously, especially you, but. I mean, yeah, but that was, you just were with a trash guy. <laughs> who, I know you're watching. <laughs> I know he is. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had this trash guy. <laughs> And it was just bad. You poor little Haley didn't deserve that. And that's... I was such a nice girl. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's... I mean, that was that. And I, I feel like it only took us like a few like weeks or a couple months or something to like become friends yeah. again. Like it was fine. And like, yeah, and here we are. Like, obviously, like it's fine. I think it's really yeah. weird though. Like I feel like if you don't know us personally, like it can sound really weird. Like, like people probably think I'm crazy. You know what I mean? Like still in love with your with your gay boyfriend after all this time. You know what I mean? She has <laughs> stuck around. But I think if anyone's in love with anyone, then Caleb's in love with me. <laughs> I think about that sometimes. Cameron says it all the time. Cameron says it all the time. And he's like, it, we think he's joking, but he's actually not he's at all. He's not joking. Anyway, okay. So that's that, right? Is that... I think that's that. That's that. Is that deep enough? I mean, I know it's a podcast. You know, we're supposed to dive in. But, like, it's the first episode. Calm down. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of what I can remember. Everything else has been blocked out of memory. So I did the best I could do. Okay. So let's go from that into how did we form together as the fitness marshal? Like, obviously, Hay and I were best friends. I She was always a dancer. I was... Even after we broke up, I was always, like in love with her perf- as a performer like i i Duh. hyped you up too much oh shut but up. i genuinely i mean she was great is great and i would come to her watch like your shows a few times in mm-hmm. muncie because you were she, in her college she was a dance troop captain sergeant what were you <laughs> who's the president the president <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh so i got to like watch you dance and stuff and i after starting the channel obviously my dream was always one whenever i'm doing anything i'm a community like type person i mm-hmm. hate doing things just by myself that's not fun i've it's never not enjoyed fun it at all but you're also an only child and you kind of grew up doing things by yourself yeah and like i can't play single player video games because i need someone else to enjoy the fun with <laughs> i me. love a good single player video she game. plays monopoly by herself she's a <laughs> psychopath <laughs> okay okay <laughs> All right, let's go back here. That was when I was little. What else am I supposed to do? I had all these board games and no one to play with. We should do a podcast on you. My favorite thing, hold on real quick. My favorite thing is the time that I actually try to play Guess Who by myself. (laughs) (laughs) That's all. That is all authentic. And Battleship. It's just not, you can't do that. I would give anything to see that. (laughs) All right. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> I, the goal was always to do this with people that I love. Now I what it was just kind of doing it with, um, like people that I did work with at college, um, like friends of mine, but not like close, close friends. Well, one of them was a really close friend. That was a really bad falling out. We could talk. I don't want to talk about no, that. No, I'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Haley would like randomly not you wouldn't like visit IU much because I had gas money because I had that 21st century scholarship so I got kind of paid to go to college he got 100% paid probably got yeah he got paid to go to college I was I also was a 21st century scholar and I did not pay to go to college yeah but they paid for my room and board so I had like funds so I would like drive to Muncie so so I ended up picking her up like when she would stay with me I'd pick you up Mm -hmm. drive pick you up from Muncie drive back to Bloomington drop you off in Muncie drive back to Bloomington yeah it was extra (laughs) um but I remember the first time I had you in a video, like I convinced you to come to Bloomington. I picked you up and I think Shaylee was in that shoot, my sister too. Mm-hmm. And we shot a few videos and I was just so much fun. Like if you look back, like those videos are trash. So trash. But They're like, not good. But it was a nice like, oh, this is really fun doing this with my best friends. Like, yeah, it never felt like work at that point. I mean, we weren't, it wasn't a business yet. No. So, but you, I were just like, come down for random shoots. Then I started coming to Muncie and we'd shot videos in Muncie. Oh, yeah. We did um, all the time. And it's then so funny, it I slowly, I don't, here's the thing. I'm like a low key, um, I almost said manipulative. <laughs> <laughs> um, no way. <laughs> a low key, what's the word when you like have like a plan, like a, 
and you'll do anything to make that plan go to action. Yeah, like I, Selfish. I knew in my, <laughs> <laughs> I knew in my mind that I wanted you and Bria. Yeah, like when we were first doing it, because Bria was in some of my videos early like, on. She also went to IE. Yeah, and I we have we had so much fun. We were like best friends too. And so I wanted Haley and Bria to be like the backup booties. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that like, I, I couldn't just one day be like, hey, like you're the official backup booty. But I was like, hey, come to this shoot again. Like, oh, hey, yeah, no, I'll work around your schedule. Like we can move this around. Yeah. I made it a point to make sure they could be in videos. So yeah. that just kept happening more and more. And as the channel grew, then I think I knew it would like make more sense for you guys to want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Like when it was more of like an established thing and like we started doing a few, I remember the first time we did a show. Oh my God. That, I feel like that was kind of like the cementing moment. Yeah, that was crazy. And it wasn't even a show. Was it the private event? Was that the first thing we did? Or was it oh, the- Oh, I thought about like in Carmel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was the first one that I did. <laughs> and the, and the, we were like fucking with it so heavy. And I remember like <laughs> Bree and I were like afterwards- Actually, I would have. <laughs> I'm talking about Bria asked me because I was still in college at this point, and Bria asked me. She was like, "So, what are you planning to do like after college?" And I was like, "She was like, hope that this takes off." And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> "I didn't like. I wasn't planning on it taking off, but I had no other prospect. Like, I was just like." I have no clue. Like, I had not a single clue. So, thank God it did. That is so funny. Yeah. That's funny. And, well, because when it started, like, we did a random little event. And I think we got, like, paid, like, 40 bucks. <laughs> and it was for, like, a comp like a corporate company. And it was the most awkward. It was, it like, was their Christmas so awkward. gathering. Yeah. And it was a bunch of, I would say, people in their 40s and 50s. In like jeans and sweatshirts, not trying to dance in an auditorium with seats where you sit down. Right. And they had us on stage doing a few dances. We did yeah. dessert. And Definitely dessert. Sorry. Sorry. <sighs> the two OGs. And Hotline Bling. No way. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and that was just a cr And then we like went to coffee after. Oh my God. We, that was like my first time really hanging out with Bria. Which was again, I was like, all right. These You're two like, girls gotta be friends. Yeah, no, we, they were, so we were much friends fun. separately. I was friends with Bria and Haley. Separately. Yeah, even though Bria also went to the same high school, but we were just never close. Yeah, so that was like a bond that started to be formed there, and mm -hmm. then we just—it's like once everyone was on the same page and like friends, it became easier to be like, okay, everyone, like get together, we'll do the shoe, and then right. we just got the hang of it, and then it yeah. became more of a streamlined process yeah. than a random yeah occurrence. Yeah. So that's. Oh, and for context, I'm sure you guys all, all know, but like Bria is the girl that was in the videos. She was in a, for like three years, right? Yeah. Um, so if you don't know her, Bria at Bria and Michelle. At Bria and Michelle. At Bria and Michelle. So if you can envision anything for TFM, like what is your craziest, wildest dream for the fitness marshal? I don't know. It's so I hard hate to that say question. because like... You get, opp like, the opportunity, like, you can't control what opportunities really, like, are handed to you. Like, there's some crazy-ass things that we've been asked to do. Yeah. And we're like, whoa, like, never thought that this would even be, like, capable, like, would be capable of, like, getting to this point or whatever. No, and I feel like the, I, that is honestly a whole dive into another thing. Because when, like, this first started, it was just so naive. And I had a really skewed perception of how the world worked. And I thought yeah, that you can still just. Still kind of does. I, but yeah. But he's better, a little. It's like, it helps me and also hurts me. So it's like, I have to have other people around me who don't share that yeah. to like keep me grounded. Yeah. But when I first started, I was like, just make content that you love and then like money will come and like someone will notice you. And that's what it was. It was like, someone will notice you and like take your career to the next level, which mm -mm. Um, wasn't true. Mm -mm. I mean, like granted, like there have been opportunities that have come here and there that like could have done that or whatever but you just can't count on that and I counted on it with everything yeah and it's like that was ballsy of me and I had the luxury of having an income from school yeah to not have to have that opportunity to do that but I really thought that this was going to be something where I'd end up monetizing all the videos or it just like get better <laughs> oh yeah I just thought the money was gonna come and I really never had a plan outside of that like I had a plan I had a goal for the brand but I would always tell people like perform at the Super Bowl or 
be fitness pop stars, but I really didn't ever know what that meant as mm-hmm. a business because the world is set up where everything's a business and you have to think of it that way. It's not just like, oh, I'm really excited to go perform and do this. It's like, yeah, you can do that, but if you're not thinking of it as a business person... Yeah, like there's no longevity in that. No. So that was the biggest wake-up call. So now I'm excited that we're like doing the booty army and mm-hmm. having like the 60-minute live streams every sweat sessions every week. <laughs> And we're working on another thing that will be really exciting if it comes to fruition. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I don't even know if I know what you're talking about. Oh. Um, <laughs> if you still know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but I feel like this past year has been like a real awakening as far as the business side of it and thinking about the future. Because mm-hmm. it's so easy to burn out or so easy to get a viral video. It's not easy. But, like, when it happens, then you have a false sense of what. Like, I'll talk about us. When we had the Me Too video go viral, mm-hmm. our, I mean, we were selling out tours left and right. Yeah. We had no problem packing a venue with, like, 400 people. Yeah. Or, like, 700 people. Yeah. Like, yeah, remember Denver where there was 1,000 people. Yeah, that's crazy. But then once that video kind of tapered <laughs> off, like we still sold tickets, but it was like a third of that or something. Yeah. And that was out of nowhere. Yeah. So, and that was our livelihood. That was our income. That video. Yeah. And I think we can definitely do a whole other episode just on... Viralness. The, well, the realities and- of when you're like doing something fun with your friends and that turns into a business. Oh, they already have that on here. Okay, because that is that we could talk for an hour about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Did I answer that question? Yeah, I mean, I think that what I gather from that is that you just want to build an actual business that can kind of like last a long time. Like, I think what's most important in like the entertainment world is like longevity and like taking whatever you know following or whatever you have and keeping them interested. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really hard and it's really draining sometimes, but like. It's just, it's just yeah. what it is. It was also kind of a wake up call for me too, because when we were doing it initially, it was just for us and it was just like, what's going to make us have the most fun or the happiest. But mm-hmm. the bigger you get and the more you make it a business, it has to, it becomes more about everybody else and what they're getting out of it. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you have to start to like weigh your own desires for like what the people who are following you want to get from you. Mm -hmm. And there's like a fine line between being inauthentic and just like having a cohesive brand that people know what they're going to get out of it. Yeah. Which is why I was even scared to do this podcast. Because I was like, do people want it? Is that too off brand? Like, is this fitness enough fitness related? But and Haley convinced me to do it. So I really hope this, you know, I, I think regardless if it's successful or not, I think it's exciting just to like venture out and do new things. Yeah. Agreed. But... Yeah, I think everyone in this industry is always really, cons- at least they should be thinking about longevity. Yeah. Amen. Well, you know, we were supposed to do a fan Q&A, but we didn't. Oh, we didn't do a fan Q&A? We'll do it the next time. Okay. Your favorite part about your job? My favorite part about my job? Yeah. Um, oh gosh. I can answer myself. Answer. So my favorite part about what we do is that I feel like a lot of YouTubers don't, wow. Oops. I feel like a lot of YouTubers don't get to like travel like we do and like meet like they travel obviously but like they don't get to like have meet and greets like we do or like really interact with their subscribers like we do so I think that that's a really cool advantage that we have mm-hmm. and I think it's so I think tour especially is just so fun to be able to just like dance with you guys and like do meet and greets yeah it makes it really like aside from like everything else like shooting videos and stuff like that like I don't feel the like ramifications of that until like I'm on stage Mm -hmm. and like I meet you guys like it kind of feels empty sometimes if that makes any sense because you're not getting that like that FaceTime yeah yeah that makes sense well because the videos get really lonely yeah (laughs) they they get lonely (laughs) and like when we don't tour for a while like we did just now like we had didn't tour for six months and I was like it's just you forget. You're like, what's the point? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you realize that it's not nothing to do with us. Because when you make, and I like, you watch all these videos on YouTube and like, you're so connected to all your favorite creators, but mm-hmm. like, they don't, they don't see you. They, they can't tell your reaction. Like just today I was, hi Juice. I was like making my meal. Like I do every single morning, put on Philip DeFranco. I get so excited every day to watch his show. I sit down in my room, like eat my food and it's my time. And I was just like thinking to myself, 
I'm, I, I know other people have that same like ritual with us and yeah. how excited they are. But like when we're making the videos, it's so easy to feel like is, no who one's even like, cares. Who even cares? Oh, it says like eighty thousand views so far. Like so, like it's just so numbers get so meaningless. Yeah, they really do. And you get so jaded. I remember when like work from home hit like a hundred thousand, and we freaked out. Oh my god, we freaked out. Then it got taken down. Then I got taken down. Then I got put back up. Yeah. Then I got taken down. <laughs> then I got put back up. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. yeah, my favorite part of my job, one, truly has always been working with my friends. Yeah. Um, everyone who's ever been a part of the team has always been a friend in real life, which yeah. has been amazing. Um, that's also been one of the most challenging things ap- yes. about this. But nothing worth having comes easy. That's true. Um, and the second thing is definitely finding a way to be healthy, like in the long run, like finding something that I love to do that will keep me active and keep me healthy that also fills the need I have to like be on stage and perform Mm -hmm. and to dance I really like can't even imagine doing anything else it's just like I feel like it's the perfect job for us it's insane and like we literally created it it's crazy it's so weird like obviously it's very hard and there's like a lot of like things that happen that suck (laughs) but like (laughs) but like I don't know. I feel like it's it's worth it. Yeah, it's weird that it happened at such a young... It happened when we were so young, so it's not like we had to experience the world for a long time, but mm-hmm. we both got to grow up very normal with a very... With no concept of going into a world that didn't involve a nine-to-five. Like, yeah. we both expected that. You were working at Macy's and we're... I mean, we've worked so many jobs. Yeah. We were at Taco Bell... A bunch I'll of fast food restaurants. Never forget the day where I told my boyfriend Riley. I remember like I was just I was in school and I was working and I was just like I don't know what to say other than I cannot <laughs> do this for the rest of my life. Like I cannot get up and expe- be expected to be somewhere that I don't want to be so early. Like I'm just telling you right now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not the like, I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have to figure out something else. My family was terrified. They would say the same stuff to me. They'd be like, you you can't do that. Like, we're yeah. very worried about you. Like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to get fired and apply somewhere else. <laughs> but I, I did. I got fired from every place. <laughs> me too. <laughs> also, when Haley gets fired or decides just, not to go somewhere, she just doesn't show up. Well, yes. Or call. No, when I quit, I just don't, I just don't show up. Mm-hmm. So. And you just block their number. <laughs> That's how I run away from most of my problems. The day she stops being in videos, I'm like, I'm not be able to contact her. She's going to be like, I'm like blocked on Instagram. I'm going to be gone. All right. You know what? That keeps falling. I feel like that's maybe a sign. Well, I'm not done. Can you please tape that back up, Cameron? What kind of budget do we have for this podcast? Yeah. I, uh... This would be a good point to say, if you'd like to click the button below and join for, I don't know if we have channel memberships turned on yet, but if you're watching this, then we do. If you'd like to be a channel supporter, <laughs> my PayPal is... <laughs> <laughs> Click the join button and it really just helps us out um, for this podcast. So, we're so maybe obviously... we can get two microphones. <laughs> uh, I got a little cracked out and I made a logo for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I texted you, dude. Wait, let's, let's look at this live on the podcast. Oh in. my God, Cameron. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay, I'm going to put it on the screen. That's so good. That's it. Wait. I just made it in Photoshop. <laughs> that's Wait. so good. Wait. He's Wait. fucking that's, brilliant. Wait, that's brilliant. Bitch, come for me. Wait. That's, that's so good. That's so good, I, guys. That's what? so good. Okay. I'm sure, like, um, as we do this, we'll find little segments that we like and that you guys find we like. Or you can always leave, like, suggestions of, like, things you want us to talk about. Whatever. Leave it down below. But we really want to talk about, like, each time, like, our intention for the week mm-hmm. and the music we are loving for the week, because obviously yeah. those are two very important things to us. So, Caleb, have you thought about an intention for the week or something that you're that is just on your mind this week that you want to... Yeah, implement? I have... I, this whole week, I've had a very productive week. Mm-hmm. I went to oh, Barry's boot camp with my friend Chip. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Chip. <laughs> I keep talking about this guy that she's never met. <laughs> Um, but he, we were just talking about like, and he was doing workouts, like he workouts, works out almost every day, which I'm not trying to do, but 
just ever since that, I've just been on a kick where I would get up in the morning and get a workout in and then get my like work done throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And I would just feel better. So my intention for the week has just been to start my day earlier and start it by moving and being active because I always have a better day when I do that. So I'm intending to keep that trend going. Cute. What about you? God, I don't know. I just got back from like a week of like not doing anything. I feel like I would like to find a way to just like maximize my productivity of like stuff for myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to start like really, I have been slacking on like YouTube and like doing like cool stuff for Instagram. It's just like, I want to do that. It's just, it's a lot of work for a very little payoff and I tried for so long I feel you know but I feel like I need to like buckle down and just like try again so that's kind of like my intention for this week and for the weeks to come (laughs) so don't ask me (laughs) okay I should hold you accountable and you should hold me accountable. I'll tell you to shut the fuck up if you say <laughs> anything to me. I'll tell you to shut the fuck up. And we both know that. Okay. Music we are loving. Let's talk about Jamie's album. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about it? I liked it a lot better when you weren't in the car with me. Oh. <laughs> I haven't listened to all of it yet. You, I feel like, just hated it so much that it was I did not. You're the one who said that you didn't like it at first. A lot of it did sound the same. Yes. But now that I've had more time with it, I like... Not all of them. But here's the thing. I like them all, mostly. But I feel like they're less, like, memorable. Like, I, they're more easy listening. Yeah. But there's... I can't, like, pick one out and be like, oh, I like that one a lot. Yeah, I agree. Except for the Travis Scott one. I love the Travis Scott and one. And Intentions. Yeah. Cute. Um, what about anything else? Any other music? Yeah, actually. Um, can we talk about... Which I am upset that not more... Hold on. How do you find music that you saved? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am obsessed with Sam Smith's new song, To Die For. Oh, cute. It's so haunting and the melodies and stuff. It took me a few listens, but I love Yeah, I like. That. I do like that song. Yeah. Cute. That, God, there's so many things I want to talk about music-wise. That's No, that's enough. Also, shout out to um, uh, Megan Trainer and Nicki Minaj's song, Nice to Meet You. That's really good. I haven't, like heard it enough the video is really good what too. have i even been listening to i like literally don't even know i have hold on what have you been listening to i don't even like i literally don't know tara jr i don't know that's all she listens to that's <laughs> literally all she listens to if you guys don't know tara jr like i strongly encourage you to look th- i mean it's obviously like a very like niche artist um but they're really good hold on is there anything else I've been listening to? Oh, and I've still been like listen. I've been banging to Tanache's record for like that's since a good it came record. Out. It's a good. We're going. To, we're seeing our show <gasps> in I May. Can't wait. Well, you well, I've seen her live. Haley's never seen her. I've live. never seen her. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. It's, she's incredible. She's truly. This incredible. is gonna. It's gonna be a damn good time. I it's gonna be a damn good time. <laughs> it's gonna be a damn good time. I can't wait. Okay, that's all for this episode. Wow. We're Sunzo. And you know what? I finished my coffee oh, with I my didn't. ex, but you did Caleb didn't. made this coffee for me with also his homemade cashew milk, and it's very tasty. Do you want to know what coffee that is? What? It's um, Costco brand coffee. Work. It's their organic coffee. I got a bag of that, and I got a bag of Pete's. Pete's is his favorite coffee. Now. It's not. It is. It kind of is. If you guys have seen the video, then you know. Actually, my favorite coffee is Groundwork. <sighs> kind of like crack, but yeah. It's kind bad. of like crack. But <laughs> Speaking of crack, I'm starting to break out in a hive, so it's time to go. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in yeah. to our very first episode. We this could have gone a lot. Where we were, we were going to have enough to talk about. I we know. couldn't shut up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Squawk, squawk. <laughs> well, if you're just listening to this podcast, we do have a visual uh, as well on YouTube, so you can sc- subscribe to that channel. Um, I think you can like leave reviews yeah. like on the like podcast, like wherever you're listening to the podcast. And that helps a lot with like people getting to see it. Give us f- stars. Do they do stars? I don't five, know. Stars. <laughs> five stars. Five stars. <laughs> five stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, and send us. We are always uh, open for topics too. And I yeah. think you already said that. Just like, let us know. All up in the comments. Let us know. You can follow us on Instagram uh, the, at the Fitness Marshall at Haley Jordan Twelve. Yo. And. Yeah. Yeah, and um, <laughs> signing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's cheers. 
Cheers. Ooh, I bet that sounded really good on the mic, honestly. All right. Gotta go. <laughs> Coffee with my ex. <laughs> <laughs>